I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now, hey, God is excellent. There is no fault in Him. I was telling you yesterday, if you would just give Him your heart, which means give Him your mind, and He will do great things in your life. Praise God. Before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Now you see, this, that's something he told us to do. Jesus told us to do it. And as we do, we do it with expectation. We don't just say it as a recitation. No, we say it with expectation. As I'm even leading you to say it, there are things in my heart I'm trusting him for today. Praise God. So can we release our faith in agreement? Say, Father, I demand my daily bread from you today. And I receive it because I believe in Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Hey, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel yet, please do so right now. Praise God. Touch that subscription button. If you're listening to it on, on WhatsApp or on Facebook, just click on the link so that it will take you to the YouTube channel and, and subscribe to, the, to my channel. And then put on the notification button also. It's for your own good. Praise God. And also help me share this message. It's of great importance. If you are blessed, then let others get blessed also. Praise God. So, I was sharing something wonderful with you yesterday. Now, all these things are interwoven. That's what, we, that's what it meant by the, the, the complete gospel. Everything is into, so there, there is no special message. You know, for example, someone says, um, I'm called to uh, marriage ministry. And so, what do you mean by that? No, my, my specialty is on marriages. And they're like, well, the truth is simple. If you're a good Christian, you will have a good marriage. You know what I mean? If you're both husband and wife, you're both good Christians, you will have good marriage. So you don't need any special teaching about marriage. You don't. So what does it mean to be a good Christian? It's not the one who's always in church. Every day the church is open. A good Christian is simply one who is led by the Holy Ghost. One who has given his heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. If husband and wife, and that's why, you know, we encourage people, you want to get married, you're born again. Don't just go look for the beautiful sister. Go look for the one whose heart is beautiful. I'm telling you the truth. A lady or a man with a beautiful heart, it doesn't matter how squeezed the face is at the time, a beauty will soon spring up from that face. Because if the beauty of the Lord Jesus is in their heart, guess what's going to be happening to them? The Bible says, we all with unveiled faces, beholding as in a glass, the glory of God, are being changed into the same image from glory to to glory so that's why i say no matter how squeezed the person's face is at the moment wait for a moment just wait just hold on as long as that person is having fellowship with god as long as that person is having in, in, in great intercourse with the lord jesus christ as long as that person is in that place of koinonia with god something will begin to happen one day you're going to look at this spouse of yours and say man you're beautiful. Yes, because God is beautiful. Oh, he is beautiful. He is not ugly. Praise God. He is not. He is beautiful. And everything he created is beautiful. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So, so really, if you're a good Christian, you'll be a good financial manager. If you're a good Christian, You'll be a good husband. You'll be a good wife. If you're a good Christian, you'll be a good staff in any organization you find yourself. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit to teach you. You see that? So, so I'll say, oh, uh, there's a special financial seminar for 
um, Christians that want to learn about finances. Sincerely speaking, sincerely speaking. Now, I'm not putting down people who have focused on that part of, uh, of ministry. I'm not in any way putting them down. Praise God. And if you think I'm doing that, please forgive me. But I'm talking to God's children in the way that God sees them. John said, you don't have that any man should teach you. But as the Holy Spirit teaches you and is true, even so you must abide by him. Now, I was talking to my wife one time and, and we're just sharing on how good God has been to us. So I was talking to her, I said, it's amazing that we never, there are certain things we never set out to do. Like we have these plans and then we have this thing figured out that this is what we're going to do. You know, we're talking about our finances then. And so we're looking at certain patterns that have been formed in our lives. And then I was like, for some reason, for some reason, the Holy Spirit have taught us how to be great financial managers. Like truly, we didn't read books about it. Even though we read books, but I've never said, look, I need to be a good financial, let me go and get this book. No. But then for some reason, we just notice we have certain patterns. And by the time we begin to study those patterns in our lives, we now realize that we always have money to do everything we need to do when we are supposed to do them. So, or like, hey, why can't people just follow God? Why can't people just follow the Lord? See that now? The same thing. Husband and wife. Come on now. I, 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 it's not something to boast about. You know, you just wake up and realize that, hey, I'm, doing, I'm not doing pretty bad. I'm doing good as a husband. I'm doing good as a wife. How? Not because you've read all the books. Sometimes those books will even mislead you, to even put you in trouble. Because the person you're reading the book for is not reading the book. So you are doing your own part, but you're not getting the right response from the other person. And then it becomes confusing. But you see, when you fellowship with the Holy Spirit, that's why I say you must be a good Christian. Even if the other person is a terrible person, most times what puts us in trouble is our own emotions, when we respond to our emotions. Because you see, there's a principle in scriptures, most times I cancel uh, couples or even people generally when, when it comes to relationship issues whether um, relationship unto marriage or work relationship whatever relationship a very simple scriptural principle if a man's ways please the lord the lord will cause even his enemies to be at peace with him that's how do you become a good christian or how do you be a good christian please the lord when your ways are pleasing what how do you please god do what he tells you to do at every point in time you're concerned about doing what he tells you to do when he tells you what to do you just do it guess what's going to happen he takes the responsibility of causing that situation or that person or that happening to turn around for your good praise god and i, I believe you want a better life you don't want to be a good or you don't want to be you don't want to have a good marriage so that you can write it somewhere and say oh i've had a good marriage for the past 10 years you want to be, have a good marriage for your own good praise god so you see when you give your heart to the lord jesus christ now what does he do with it he begins to direct now proverbs tells us in all your ways acknowledge him and then what is he going to do he will direct your path take note of that in all your ways acknowledge him and when you acknowledge him in all your ways, what does it mean in all your ways and i was telling you now that's actually what it means to give 
the Lord your heart. Now, so how do I acknowledge him in all my ways? I want to go somewhere. And then I just think, I'm like, wow, Lord, what do you think about this place I'm going to? Can you go with me? And when you say, can you go? It's not just a prayer. I say, Father, you know, like we pray, Father, as I travel on this ship, go with me. Make the journey safe. Make it cool. Oh, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. No, do you pause to like, does he really want me to go on this trip? Now, that you find in your thinking process. You find that in your thinking process. For some reason, you're just feeling a discomfort about this trip. And then you begin to think, okay, you know what? Let me pray about this thing because I don't know, I don't like the way I feel concerning this thing I want to do. Lord, uh, sincerely, Lord, I am thinking this is the right thing to do. But, but if you are thinking otherwise, just let me know. If you will show me what you want me to do, that's exactly what I'll do. See, now what have you done? You have acknowledged him in the way of that decision you're about to take. And you pray that prayer, then you are watchful. You are watchful. And sometimes, now, you see, I tell people this, you know, sometimes when people go, hey, but I've prayed, I don't know if God is trying to communicate with me somehow. Maybe I'm the one that is not hearing him. No, sir. The reason he communicates with you is so that you will understand him. Are you getting what I'm saying? So he is the one that takes responsibility of getting his word across to you. See that? And then he's not going to get his word across to you in such a way that you will not know. It's like, maybe God has spoken to me, but it's me that did not hear. Then he didn't speak to you. <laughs> Praise God. He didn't. Even though God is always speaking, it's not all the time he will speak directly to what you want him to speak. And the reason is simple. Not because you, like, Lord, speak to me about this thing. And say, no, I will not speak to you. I will speak to you next day. No, I learned by experience. Praise God. You know, you know, there are, there are things I have said to the Lord, like, over the years, you know. I said, Lord, talk to me about this thing. And at that moment, or even weeks pass, sometimes years pass, I hear nothing about that thing. You know, so I just think, maybe he did it. And then somewhere down the line, now sometimes, I think the, the longest, now, maybe there are things that are still going on, but you know, when, when he shows up, you now remember, that the longest I understand that I have waited for something, that this was because I was really desiring to know from him, about this particular matter was two years. Two years. I had asked the Lord concerning something. And he, he didn't talk to me about it until after two years. And when he showed up, he, 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 I wasn't praying about it. I was just busy, you know, doing stuff. And then suddenly I heard him say to me, you asked me concerning this. Take your pen. I want to talk to you about it. Woo! <laughs> I said, yeah. Now, I, I wouldn't say I've completely forgot about it. It was somewhere in my mind that I have not cracked this thing yet. You see that? So two years after he came. So you know, I was pondering on it for like two years. Now, this was years later, you know. I was pondering about it. I said, man, do you realize God took two years to tell you this thing? So while I was pondering about it, the Lord spoke to me. He said, no, it didn't take me two years to tell you. It took you two years to understand. Like, how? Like, no, I remember the day you came to say, you asked me about this. He said, yes. Because that's when you were ready to understand. I said, no. You know how we argue with God? I do it. I said, no. I asked you. You didn't say anything to me until two years later. He said, no. I began to answer you from the very day you spoke to me about it. Like how? Then he began to connect. Ah, yo, yo, killer by the Lord. Wow, I'm sorry. You are right. You see, what I had asked the Lord for, he had it in him to tell me. But he if he if he had told me, there is no way I was going to understand what he's saying. 
So what did he do? He began to bring the knowledge in bits and pieces. He began to bring knowledge to me, bring knowledge. You know, sometimes it's like a computer. You get your computer. Oh, someone sends you a file. You, you, you are so interested. You want to download this file, but then it tells you, sorry, you, the file cannot run on your system because it's your, your system needs certain programs to run that file, for certain files to run that program. And then you now go and buy those files, buy those softwares. You understand what I'm saying? You now buy those softwares, install on your system, then you run the file. Now that's what happens sometimes. There are certain information you need to understand what you have asked God for. See that? And so what does he do? He begins to lead you in the paths that you will get those informations. And you are getting them. You get that it took two years for him to get all those information. Now, when he now said to me, let me tell you that thing you asked, it just came straight and I understood everything. So in my mind, I was now thinking it took him two years. No, it took me two years to understand. <laughs> Praise God. Now that's the same thing. Sometimes you pray and ask the Lord, Lord, tell me, tell me, tell me. You know, for example, oh God, should I marry this person or not? You see, he has the answer for you. But you know, you know the truth. And that's one thing you learn when you keep walking with the Lord. You learn that it's not about a yes or no answer. You see, because, and, and I learned this also by experience. There are times, you know, Jesus said the Holy Spirit will show us things to come. Now, the fact that he's showing us things to come doesn't mean all the time we have to act based on what he has showed us. I'll tell you, I'll give you an example. You might pray and say, Lord, should I go into this business? And the Lord will tell you, go. So you know you have his word. Okay. And then you're, oh, okay, let's do, you know, and then you now have a vision that you didn't make profit from the business. You have that vision. So like, ah, but God told me to go into this business. Why am I? I've had this vision like three times. And this business did not end well. Then you begin to think it's the devil. Satan, I bind you. It could be the devil. Don't get me wrong. But then you say, okay, maybe the devil wants to intervene. You pray, there is no strength to pray. So now let me fast. You fast, there is no strength. You do everything you want to do, there is no strength. Ha. So what should I do? Should I pull out? The Lord doesn't tell you to pull out. Ha. But I remember when God said I should do it. Okay. And then, you know, I said, well, let me keep watching and watching and watching and watching. Then in the process of time, events happen and everything ends and, and everything spoils. You lose money in that business. And I like, I, I saw this thing happen. But why didn't God see to him? It's not about the money you're losing. To him is the experience he wants you to gain. And that's why he told you to go in the first place but then he began to show you things to come he began to show you that look you're gonna now why was he showing this so that when it happens you know it's easy for discouragement to set in it's easy for fear to set in but your remembrance that but god showed me this thing i prayed about it then now don't sit down on your own and start saying but god you showed me why did i stop it i prayed hey you prayed he heard you be smart in life. What do you do? Quickly realize that the purpose of this thing was not for me to make profit. The purpose was for me to gain experience. Now, sometimes he wants you to realize the heart of people that are around you. Why? Because of the future. You see? So you say, oh, wow, I never knew this person could act like this when it comes to money. Aha. Uh -huh. Thank God, it's just 200,000 we're talking about. What if it was 20 million? Aha! Uh -huh. Wow. Say, Lord. Now, what do you do? I'm telling you this by 
experience and one who's knowledgeable in the things of God. What do you do when you realize that? Say, Father, you know, I obeyed you to get into this business. So Lord, that money I have released into this business, I release it as a seed and I receive the harvest. The Bible said the kingdom of God is about seed time and harvest. So Lord, I release that finances. I release that money as a seed. Now, why is this a seed? You did it according to his word. So you are owed a harvest. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My time is up today. Praise God. Whew. Thank you, Lord. Everyone who's going through what kind, one kind of disappointment or the other. Lord, let your hand of comfort rest upon them right now. Bring them knowledge and understanding. And above all, Lord, restore in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.